This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Mahama Academy School Gate! Those are some sudden transitions. Wow, at my usual time, 4.45 a.m., I woke up in my usual way and ran the course I'd marked down mentally on my way here. That's a pretty, pretty sight. To tell the truth, when I was stopped by the policeman yesterday, it was because I'd been wandering back and forth in the same place. I'd been planning out a possible marathon route, in other words. Oh, he's a runner! I see. Dang, he's... Early bird gets the worm, apparently. I woke up at the usual time, ran the usual time, and now I'm eating my usual breakfast menu. No different from the days when I was living together with my master in the mountains. My standard temple of living. Ooh, what's the breakfast? French toast? Waffles? McDonald's hash browns? <laughs> if there is a difference, it's limited to the slight surprise I felt when I opened my eyes and found a roof over my head. During my hike from Yamanashi, I had gotten used to sleeping out in the open. So when I woke up and set it inside a room, there was a slight feeling of unease as I thought, right, I'm living in a dorm now. That mild discomfort hasn't disappeared even now as I'm eating my corn cereal. Oh, <laughs> they're great! It's hard to settle down inside a new lair until it's ingrained with your scent. Are you a cat? Is this going to be yet another anime thing where somebody's actually a cat? Even so, I'll start living at this tempo every day from now on, going to school every morning, so there's no real need to rush things. If I actively spend every day packing myself with potentially useful knowledge, someday this sort of lifestyle might come naturally to me. The effort strikes me as a little troublesome, but as my master once told me, when it comes to your life and your women, a little bit of trouble is just about right. Uh... Uh-huh. Sure. Speaking of women, they're a simple bunch, but that doesn't make them any less difficult to handle. I learned that much in my first year living with my master. In my master's words, when you're a brat, running fast is enough to make you popular. When you're a middle schooler, the guys who can fight will be popular, and after that it's the guys with brains who get the girls. In other words, run, punch, and read books, and you'll never run dry. What do you think? Short and sweet, right? What the heck? That was her theory, at least. I guess there's some truth to that. Early on, it's, yeah, you want to be fast, then you want to be tough, and then, hey, if you're smart, you actually make money. The things she said were always ridiculously simplistic. Honestly, I ignored those words with a snort the first time I heard them, but my master was a woman who put her beliefs into practice. Every morning she made me run, and every day she hit me with a stack of books. Although I don't know if she's to blame, I still run 16 kilometers every morning and habitually read books whenever I have free time. What? You run 16k every morning? What the heck? Maybe that's his life. Sometimes she was harsh, sometimes she was sweet. She could, she would emit an abrasive, overpowering aura at times, but every once in a while, she could be so gentle that I thought my brain would melt out of my ears. That was my master, a woman with a sizable build who was nonetheless very picky about the little things. Okay. I've had a hard time dealing with large women ever since those days, but being aware of that fact doesn't mean I can fix it. It's not that I dislike them on a conscious level, but whenever I see a tall woman, I can't help but be wary out of pure instinct. If you ask me why I'm bringing this up all of a sudden, well, <laughs> it's because I want the audience to know. That would be because I've just been reminded that there's a large woman at this school as well. Uh-oh. I do not like this girl's voice. Ugh. Oh, it's the Cicada Sisters. Oh, boy. Pigtail Girl and Red-Haired Girl. Oh, boy. Since this place is a student dormitory, it's of course only natural that a community of students would already be living here, and it's entirely probable that they have their own rules that I don't know yet. Also, I'm a country hick, fresh from a rural areas of Yamanashi, so it goes without saying I'm poorly versed in the customs and rituals of this land. I have no way of penetrating the depths of significance that might be hiding in an action that, at a glance, looks to be a simple case of bullying. What game's this? What are the rules? Marty recognizes the red-haired girl? Really? It looks like... it looks like she... Okay, are they, are they, are they, I wonder if they're actually sisters, because, like, the larger one is, like, brushing the, the smaller one's hair. Yeah, I, I think, I think red-haired girl must be, like, an actual high school student, and she's gotta be, like, an elementary school student. Huh? 
Oh, now we're actually getting their sprites. <laughs> Uh-oh, Pigtail Girl looks worried. <laughs> the puzzled faces staring back at me are familiar. She looks like a girl from Angel Beats. Hmm. It's the little girl-big woman combo I arbitrarily named the Cicada Sisters when I first arrived at the school yesterday. Who do you think? Wow, I don't like you. <laughs> That's so. I suppose that means I'm irredeemably stupid. Please call me Moron Boy, as if we've been friends for ten years, Cicada Sisters. <laughs> I, I got I do like Pigtail Girl's socks. Those are good. I saw the pair of you from the gate yesterday. One of you was swinging a cicada around, and the other was shrieking, if I remember correctly. Hmm. I'll see what I can do. Nope, I'm just the UPS delivery man. Yeah, Kazumi Yuji. Nice to meet you. I thrust out my right hand, but the tall woman in front of me doesn't show any signs of grasping it. <laughs> she doesn't believe in shaking hands. She stiffened on the spot, staring fixedly at my face. It looks as though she's even forgotten to breathe. Something wrong? <laughs> she knows us, doesn't she? The big woman's frozen expression suddenly melts, and she lightly shakes my hand. She's, it's an unexpectedly small, but decidedly cold hand. Suo-amane? Alright, so you're Amane. Is her name Makina? <laughs> Okay, I like how the, I like how this girl speaks in English occasionally. That's funny. I, her voice is very grating, though. <laughs> I might bite. Irisu Makina. Makina is a great name. That's that's that's, that's a cool name. Iris Iris Makina. Iris is a god, a Greek, a Greek god, and isn't Machina a Latin word? Literally translated, it would mean something like Mecca Rainbow Goddess. What country are you from? <laughs> Wasn't she speaking English just now? Oh, that's kind of cool. So she's like bilingual in that regard. I see. Well, good to meet you. <laughs> Staring at my outstretched hand in silence, Makina cleans to Amine's back as if she's trying to hide herself. Oh, she's shy. What's wrong? Oh, that's fair. Well, now it's time for her to get used to them. Aww. Well, I'm not her age, but... Oh, that's sad. She was in the hospital. Hmm. I withdraw the hand I'd been holding out toward Makina. There's no need to force her to deal with me in the first place, I guess. Well, I mean, if we're... We're in the same school together. Handshakes are cool. Don't need to be don't need to be shy. <laughs> okay, yeah, Amine's definitely her. Or no, wait, no, they have different last names. She can't be her older sister. Is don't get any snacks supposed to be an effective threat in this day and age? Or so I thought. Well, she's a little girl. <laughs> So it is. <laughs> but hearing those words, Makina bites her lip tightly and extends her right hand toward me with a strained expression. I gently clasp her small hand and put on the natural-looking fake smile I learned from my master. <laughs> Everyone needs to have a fake smile. I'm Kazumi Yuji. Good to meet you. Oh no, are you going to be the slow talker like Ryo? 
Her voice is so small and marked by a distinct lisp. Her hand is as tiny as her body, and it's hot like that of a child. Ducks. I like dogs. What about it? I'm not really the indecisive sort. I don't hesitate when I need to come up with an answer. Even more so when I have an important decision to make. Compared to failing without even trying, I'd rather take action, even at the minute, or, uh, even at the risk of a mistake. <laughs> Are you mocking me? <laughs> then why'd you laugh? <laughs> I've heard answering a question with another question is a sign of stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Got it, moron girl. <laughs> okay, so you, you're you probably the Kyo of the game, aren't you? What a troublesome woman. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel like being late on my first day. I'm used to waiting. I'll kill time sightseeing over there or something. I get that a lot. Well, I'll see you in class. What? If it's something I can answer. No, you can't have any of my Girl Scout cookies. If you got something to say, spit it out. No need to hold back. I see. I don't understand the thought patterns of large women. I don't think the fact that she's large has anything to do with it. The master would probably say, if you don't understand by now, you never will. But my own thoughts are more along the lines of, even if I could understand, why bother? Well then, oh, what the? Is literally every Japanese school hallway the exact same? <laughs> this Doki Doki Literature Club and Konad have like basically the exact same school hallway. What the heck? <laughs> well then, having said that, Domine, I'm confronted with, with the fact that there are no sights particularly worth seeing here. There's easily an hour before the start of class. I've obviously woken up too early. Well, still better than being late, I guess. Might as well wait in the classroom. Right after I mumble those words, just as I begin walking toward down the hallway. Uh, is somebody in danger? What the? <laughs> I've taken down a purse snatcher already. I'll help you. <laughs> as I'm making my way toward the classroom, the principal had described yesterday, I hear something resembling a scream. No, not a scream exactly. The hell? Do I want to know what this is about? Although it doesn't seem to be an emergency situation, I'm certainly a bit concerned by this sound. It's dramatically out of place in the otherwise quiet morning schoolhouse. For the time being, I decide to approach. Uh, oh, uh, new student! Uh, oh, is she doing vocal warm-ups? She's got a cute design, I like that. I could do without the pigtails, though. When I peer inside through the hallway window, I find a single woman shouting in the direction of the blackboard. Judging from the fact that she's wearing a uniform, it would seem that she's a student here like Sachi, Yamane, and Makina. Apparently oblivious to my presence, she continues her routine. Warming up already. Yep, okay, yeah, she's doing vocal warm-ups. After deeply inhaling... <laughs> Marty, is that what you do when you warm up vocally? <laughs> Oh, Marty's not happy. <laughs> Look, she's still at high school, Marty. Maybe she's not the best. She's, she's, she, it's pretty easy to be the best senior in the school if there's only six people in the school. <laughs> Listen to her do that. Honestly, that was, that was, that was very interesting. All in one breath, she firmly lets loose a string of syllables familiar as a vocal tuning exercise. Hmm. 
Are you practicing for a play or something? <laughs> I like her facial expressions. Going to be a tsundere. Oh no, I hope not. <laughs> oh, I hope not. I do not like tsundere's at all. In your high school, the warm ups were like C, so open, ah. This girl was clueless. Yeah, that's possible. While staring at the memo pad in her hand, she awkwardly but forcefully rattles off phrases one after another. She better be practicing lines for a play where she plays a tsundere. It seems like it'd be best to ask her what she's doing directly. Is this the broadcasting club? <laughs> that was a little shrill. In response to my question, or more likely my entrance, the woman leaps back in sh up in shock and draws back a good three meters. You also have terrible posture. <laughs> Why do all of these girls have terrible posture? <laughs> There's got to be at least one tsundere in every show or anime. No, there doesn't. There does not. <laughs> they're always they're always terrible. <laughs> Desks and chairs clatter dramatically in her wake. No, I might have been hasty to assume that from the vocal exercises. The drama club seems pl plausible as well. You seem to be saying some kind of lines. Oh, she's, she is definitely going to be Sudari. She even has the pigtails. Just as I'm getting ready to rephrase my question, the woman preempts me with her own. Me? Kazumi Yuji. I'll be transferring here as of today. <laughs> She's got a dopey face. <laughs> I hate that might be a little mean. Her face is a little dopey looking, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. <laughs> They're posed weirdly for maximum sexiness? What? That's not sexy. <laughs> yeah. Nodding, I walk a few steps forward and stand in front of the woman. So, were you doing some sort of rehearsal after all? Sorry if I interrupted. <laughs> Thus far, the maid is looking like the best of the girls. She's the grown-up version of Gretchen Hasselhoff. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't unsee that now. Which is it? I don't quite follow. But if I start asking questions, she'll probably get even noisier. So I choose the path of least resistance. Probably smart. After I flop down on a chair, the woman mutters to herself in a low, but perfectly audible voice. That is a mouthful. Matsushima Michiru? In contrast, she delivers her self-introduction with an artificial brightness. That's so. Initials MM, huh? Nobody said anything remotely like that. Oh my gosh. She's the worst kind of tsundere, isn't she? At least she's not running people over with her bike, though. Do you want to be called a masochist that badly? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, that facial expression came out of nowhere. Oh my gosh, that is the greatest face. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I really... Oh my gosh, that, that is the most glorious of all faces. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Even if she's a terrible person, she'll be very entertaining to watch, won't she? <laughs> Quite an energetic woman. She drops the subject and forges boldly on ahead. So, I was in this I thought Sachi was the class representative. Why are you lying, Michiru? 
What does that sort of mean? So, so that's the... Oh, brother. She th I like her sprites a lot. I just don't like her personality thus far. Fair enough. <laughs> oh my gosh, she, she even has the fane. She's literally like the the embodiment of the Sundere. This woman's voice suddenly grows quieter. Who doesn't like jokes? I wouldn't call myself an enthusiast. Oh, Yuji. She clears her throat affect affectedly. <laughs> okay, yeah, she definitely has the best facial expressions. <laughs> oh, are you following, like, a template on how to be a Sundari? What the heck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's a kind of cute smile there. You want me to call you Michiru, yes? That is a unique name. I have never heard the name Michiru before. She hums to herself and nods emphatically, apparently satisfied with that result. <laughs> this girl is so full of herself. Oh, Sama is only used for royalty? <laughs> wow. Next, she takes a colorful uh, wafer out of a sort of small container and crunches down on it vigorously. What are you eating? She's eating her own Girl Scout cookies. I have my own. <laughs> Wasn't asking, I was just wondering what those were. Ramune candy? That's so. From the way you were showing them off, I was pretty sure you wanted me to ask. What is wrong with this girl? I got a strange sense of deja vu from her phrasing just now. What was it? One of those long advertisements they put up inside trains? Since I don't usually ride them often, the few I've seen stand out of my memory. Right, they reprinted this idiotic article from a woman's magazine about how to make men fall for you. Purposefully treat them coldly at first in order to create a contrast for your affection when you make your move. That is terrible advice. Are you a vampire? <laughs> you look a little bit like a vampire. Wow. So you're supposed to be a Sundere. <laughs> I love the effects in this game. Yes, I did, because you're blatantly acting like one. Michiru covers her mouth with her left hand and staggers backward in apparent shock. Her reaction is a bit puzzling, but I think I probably hit the bullseye. I see. I think I understand. You're playing a Sundarian in an attempt to attract male attention, yes? Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> okay, I like the protagonist again. But there's still some points I'm not clear on, like that hair. Why are you bleaching it? No, if there's one thing that Konad taught me, it's that blonde hair was not is not normal. <laughs> you want a psycho who's gonna pop up? Please. A genuine blonde has a more natural tone, not that artificial looking gold color. I've known a few. <laughs> this music is great too. That's so. Next time I happen to visit America, remind me to pick you up some better hair dye. No Japanese person has naturally blonde hair. 
So as I was saying, why bleach it? And that hairstyle is a little odd too. It's not one that I see very often. <laughs> We're just destroying this girl. <laughs> we are verbally ripping this girl to pieces. The way that ha what has to be. <laughs> Michiru begins to mumble her words under her breath as if to en en enumerate the curse's power. Wow! We literally just destroyed this girl in like five seconds. That she has to describe the Sundere curse in the first person seems a bit strange, but pointing that out would only prolong this, so I leave it be. What? I don't think you have to be blonde, but the the whole twin tails fiend is definitely a Sundere archetype. So why are you trying to be this way if you aren't naturally? <laughs> and all of a sudden we're playing Shadow the Hedgehog. This is who I am. Michiru jabs out an index finger in my direction and <laughs> I'm gonna start giggling every time that this face comes on. As she runs out of breath in grand style, the curtain finally f drops on Michiru's one-woman show. The echoing of a ragged breathing is the only sound in the otherwise silent classroom. Exactly 30 seconds pass. Every Sundere's has have a that face. <laughs> it's tough being a Sundere. Got it. <laughs> I love the main character just doing this. <laughs> I'm not sure if that wasn't what she was looking for or if she's just lost the will to go on, but Michiru glares at me while admitting to sound reminiscent of a malfunctioning industrial machine. <laughs> Anyway, let's get along, Michiru. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have so much fun teasing this girl, aren't we? Yeah, it goes without saying. I plan to get along just fine on my own. Oh, she said the baka word. It really isn't easy being a Sundere, is it? Finally breaking down, Michiru begins flying leaning waste paper, permanent markers, and anything else lying in my direction in an attempt to drive me off. This is my class! Are you crying? Sorry, my bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, and in my attempt to end an apology seems to have only fueled her anger, so in the end I decide a temporary withdrawal is in fact <laughs> is in fact called for. Is she wearing a fanny pack? Potentially, Marty, maybe. Class is starting in another 15 minutes, but it should be fine. I'll just kill some time elsewhere. We were torturing this girl for 45 minutes. Wow. Oh, how sudden. Oh, hey, Sachi's not wearing the maid costume anymore. Yay. <laughs> Five minutes before the start of the class, practically the moment after I re-enter the classroom, Amine and Sachi arrive. The Sundere from earlier is looking at me with naked aggression, but uh, noticing the arrival of the others. Oh, that's a nice smile. What are you doing with your hands behind your back? That's... <laughs> that is a weird pose. <laughs> Resuming the performance in question, she promptly calls out to them. Oh my gosh, you're actually calling her by that. <laughs> Why? Don't do that randomly. Oh no. The instant her greeting is returned, Michiru runs over noisily and shakes her head in front of Sachi. Hands. <laughs> Sachi, you can say no. We still haven't met the last student yet, by the way. Michiru, while glancing over in my direction for some reason, desperately entreats Sachi. Amine, leaning on a desk, seems to be occupied with trying to hold in her laughter. 
<laughs> I thought she was talking for a second there. Don't cry, Sachi! Jeez. <laughs> Oh no. Both of the girls whose name starts with M have rather shrill voices, and I'm not a huge fan. Wow. The instant Mitsuru speaks, Sachi's tears abruptly vanish as if someone threw a switch. Oh, I see. Mitsuru watches her cautiously, sweating heavily. <laughs> How do you make your mouth do that, Mitsuru? I feel like Michiru is going to be the most entertaining character by far, but, like, also be annoying to <laughs> interact with. Because <laughs> she just randomly does stuff like that! <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> You're crying ribbons! <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> wow. Michiru staggers on her way back to her seat, with all the vitality of a limp rag. You feeling all right, Michiru-sama? Yeah, there she is. Sorry, just wanted to give it a try. <laughs> Michiru collapses weakly onto her desk. Is she actually in high school? She's eight years old. Magana's lisping voice sounds from the rear of the classroom. Seems like she might not be used to my presence yet. Judging from the way that she beelines straight for Amine, hides herself behind her and steals glimpses at me. It's a shame, because Makina has the coolest name by far. Wow, that's surprisingly nice of you to say that. <laughs> Appreciate it, Michiru. Oh, barf. Keep up the good work. Oh, she's so weird. Actually, literally everyone in this game is super weird. Actually, the only normal person has been the principal. <laughs> literally the only normal person has been the principal. Apart from the large woman, this bunch seems to present quite a variety of communication difficulties. Nothing but fantastically normal students here, eh, Principal? <laughs> As if in response to my sarcasm with the chiming of the opening bell. Um, hi, what are you doing here? The perfectly normal Principal appears before my eyes. <laughs> hmm? Wait a second, there's only four. As we've arrived at the beginning of the school day, I notice a difference from the information I'd heard yesterday. Standing at the podium, the principal notices the irregularity at a glance. Wasn't Sakaki, like, the name of the company that was, like, owned to the school? Her tone seems to be asking if anyone's familiar with the circumstances. Oh, yeah, that's gotta be it. Because she's she's probably part of the family who owns the school, so she can do whatever she wants. Oh boy. But I'm already predicting that that's what it is. Yumi? Oh wait, no. I was about to be like, that's a Ghibli character. No, I'm thinking Umi from Poppy Hill. Apparently, I'm not the only one with questions about our own truant. No, it's okay. I'll find a terrible way to introduce myself later. You're strangely tolerant. The principal's not also the teacher, is she? I thought there was going to be, like, teachers besides her, and she just does the administrative stuff. From an open window, the scent of the tide flows into the room. Perhaps because of the walls and steel fences surrounding us on all sides, it's not always easy to remember that this place is, in fact, close to the sea. In contrast to the breeze and the blue sky's intim intimations of freedom, the gray of those jutting fences speaks of denial and rejection. While my classmates raise their voices energetically, I pass the time staring into that sky. Oh my gosh. Anime boy near the window always looks out the window. This seems familiar. School life, huh? <laughs> 